the time period that we were closed over is normally our busiest period. So that was quite scary. And having a venue, you kind of have busy times and quiet times and the busy times um, are what pay for the quiet times. So that was all, it was slightly terrifying, but once we'd got through the fear and because of the wage subsidy, it meant I could keep all my staff on and they could eat. We had four to five tours during lockdown, which, you know, were postponed um, uh, probably for another year or so, who knows. Um, I know one tour was probably uh, a week, a week from uh, when we went from level uh, two to three to four. So that was a bit of a shock. Um, so essentially we've just postponed things. I had a tour booked um, April, uh, June and July with a band that I've been tour managing called Heinz, who are from Spain, um, around the US, Mexico and Canada. I do North America with them. And so that they, Oh, they kept trying to push it and push it and push it. And I just said, I don't feel safe. So I bailed out first and then, um, but they're Spanish and, uh, you know, they locked down well before us and then they were like, yeah, we're not okay with this. And then it got switched to November. So there was a potential that we were going to do November. And um, so we waited and waited and waited. And then it was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. We were on tour in the States and we basically the, the tour got sort of cancelled halfway through um uh, so we'd made it to new york and so the day we got to new york the next day um, a state of emergency was declared so then the, the festival kind of carried on but at that point sort of new york was quiet so you know there weren't many people at the bars and then south by southwest had been cancelled we were like oh well um because South by Southwest, one of those things that, you know, it's only probably 20% a music festival now. It's mainly a big tech festival kind of sort of thing. So we're like, oh, it'll just be like it used to be, you know, and it'll be a, a music festival and everyone will just kind of do their own thing. And we started actually picking up more gigs at South by Southwest once it'd been cancelled, <laughs> which was quite strange. Like we probably picked about three additional shows up. We did quite a few live streams over the lockdown. Uh, I think about 40 hours worth of live streaming with um, sort of around 35 different acts. So I think that was that was really good uh, to keep the, the musicians busy <laughs> and also providing you know, music to the public who are stuck at home as well. And I, you know, we've had quite large um, views on, on those live streams too so I think you know getting that music out to people who wouldn't usually um, come to Darkroom even or, or see any of these bands has been really positive. I joined my singers bubble so we were working like through level was it two or three that we got to I think it was three so for the one week that it was like level three I got to go down to Hamilton and um, work with him so we were still like working on music the whole time this is our first time doing a full album uh we've done like eps and stuff before and i guess we've gained a bit of traction since we did the ep we were just like well screw it with people probably aren't going to be getting as many physical copies anyway and people have been talking to us about wanting it for a while like we've been sitting on it for for a reasonable bit of time so it was um yeah it was kind of an excuse to just be like screw it let's release basically what we have now so let's put it on Bandcamp. We didn't really have the chance to play shows to back up what we were selling so we did have to do a bit more social media stuff. I mean we'd had to get out of the states and you know we didn't get a lot of income that we were expecting out of that so the, the tour was going really well up until that point and it was like okay we're actually going to come out of this okay you know it's gonna uh, we we're, we're more than covering our costs and then that ended you know so we're just genuinely out of pocket i guess there's the risk of losing the venue altogether you know if, if a 
if it went on much longer and we didn't get any help, then we, we wouldn't have been able to pay, well, keep the venue going, we wouldn't be able to keep up paying rent. We had the Mayor of Dunedin donating to a booster campaign. A lot of musicians came and donated. They also, quite a few musicians gave up their time and performed for us for the live streaming. And we managed to raise 10,000, just over 10,000. Mostly thanks to uh, musicians and uh, fans of music who wanted to keep the venue going, uh, which is quite extraordinary because, for me, because that their future was also very uncertain. Obviously the wage subsidy was just a, <clears throat> I didn't, you know, you just put it back into something that's, you know, like the electricity or, or whatever. So really it was just all about spreading it around. It was just the, the, the logistics of keeping the companies going really, paying GST, those kind of things. Yeah, living, um, and for me, I mean, I, all of my shit's still in Portland, Oregon. I have nothing here. I had a suitcase, um, and this has gone towards, um, yeah, I mean, like, I've had to buy clothes, I've had to buy just stuff to live. Well, the, the first gigs we've had back since lockdown have had really good turnouts, like lots of people who would otherwise not necessarily go to gigs and maybe they realize how much they miss them or maybe they just want to see a bunch of people again or something. Uh, and whether that's for socializing sake or for realizing how much they might enjoy live music. One guy came in one day and paid $50 for a cup of coffee straight after lockdown because his daughter was in the Octagon Poetry Collective. And so the, the, the show of support and love for the venue as a place for people to come has, has been fantastic. Also, um, a lot of people realize that you know, over lockdown, places like ours are really important for their mental health. And so a lot of people have been coming and telling us how appreciative they are for the venue. Uh, and it really sort of highlights it when it's taken away like that. In terms of actually attracting people back, it was, we had no idea how it was gonna go, uh, but we had, uh, the first week back, we had uh, sort of two classic darkroom shows. We had a, a cabaret and then a uh, surf rock band, and uh, they both sold out, so it was really, uh, promising to see that you know st straight from locked down to level two people are still keen to come out we've definitely seen the effects of that big chunk of time being taken out of people's touring calendars and now we that we just don't have enough dates to give people who want to come through which is not a bad problem to have it's that the calendar being too full it's also, I think people have been really supportive of live music and it's, I know that a lot of effort has been put into sort of publicity campaigns about how important music is and how if we want it, we have to support it. And I think we are seeing the benefits of that.